Hello, hi everyone. Welcome to Unit One, Daniel Defo, Life Works, and Robinson Crusoe, Lesson Number Two. So, in the previous lesson, we have already discussed the biographical details of Daniel Defo and the socio-political and cultural milieu of the 17th and 18th century. We also discussed about English novel and realism as well. Now, in this particular lesson, we are going to look into the short summary. of robinson crusoe summary of robinson crusoe by daniel defo which was written in the year 1790 so uh, there is a preface for the novel and we are going to look into the summary of the preface so in the preface there is an unnamed editor who tries to uh, you know make readers get introduced to the novel uh, which is going to follow in the next pages and he does not give away the name or story of robinson crusoe in a detailed manner but uh, he chooses to designate the narrative as a private man private man's adventures in the world okay and uh, uh, he is actually he argues that uh, this particular novel is an unassuming sincere and didactic uh, work in its style and it also instructs one to acknowledge and pay due respect to the wisdom of providence so he is actually giving us some clues about the novel which is to follow and uh, he is actually trying to say that by publishing this novel by, um, the editor is trying to say that by publishing this particular novel uh, or crusoe's tale he is rendering it accessible to many to learn many things okay so that is what is told in the preface now we will just watch a short video on the summary and then i will elaborate on the summary okay in the introduction we meet our title protagonist robinson crusoe himself he's a man with a thirst for adventure close to his heart and he leaves home against his parents advice going on a number of sea adventures at one point he begs for repentance hoping to make it home but pretty quickly he's back to sea going on more adventures during the rising action moroccan pirates take crusoe into slavery with a little help from some other slaves crusoe escapes and travels to brazil where he becomes a plantation owner and is pretty successful a shipwreck strands crusoe on an island killing all the other crew crusoe lives alone on this island for 23 years During that time, he raises livestock, he grows crops, he builds fortifications, and he documents his experiences embracing Christianity. Crusoe rescues a captive whom he names Friday after the day of the week he saved him from his cannibal tribe. During the climax, Crusoe and Friday help an English captain who's been the victim of a mutiny. They fight off the mutineers, take the ships back. and strand some of the prisoners on the island. Crusoe finally is ready to return to England, and he does. And during the falling action, Crusoe learns he has made a fortune from his plantation in Brazil. We see how his Christian values have grown and changed him during his time on the island, and he gives away a great deal of his fortune. However, a thirst for adventure still remains close to his soul, and he embarks on new adventures. During the resolution, Crusoe embarks with a small crew on a new adventure in the mountains between Spain and France, where he fights wolves and bears. And we learn that he's married, has children, and that his wife sadly passes away. Crusoe is even able to return to his beloved island to see that a new colony has sprouted up there. Robinson Crusoe ends on a cliffhanger, promising more adventures. now we will move into the summary of the story so as you have seen in the video there is uh, the it is the story of robinson crusoe and robinson crusoe is somebody who uh, wants to record his own life story and that is what uh, is being read to us adana nammal vaaikkunnathu and uh, he is introduced as the youngest of the three sons of a fairly well well to do merchant of german origin 
and uh, his father actually wants him to uh, practice law and study law and to become financially independent but he is totally into uh, sea voyages and adventures so he cannot even though he tries to follow his father's commands he uh, gives in to temptation and embarks on a ship bound for london on september 1 1651 with one of his friends uh but this was not very accept acceptable to his parents and his first sea journey was not very good also uh it was uh, full of hindrances and a violent storm drives him and his friend very near to death cruzo comes to see the storm as a divine warning that he should quit sea travel and his friend's father also dissuades him from sailing which again reminds him of his own father's warnings okay but cruzo is not daunted by this and establishes himself as a successful merchant on a ship leaving from london he makes a fortune as a merchant and immediately plans another voyage so as soon as he makes good fortune as a merchant he plans another voyage after making a widow the custodian of his newly acquired wealth now the second voyage also turns out to be disastrous as his ship is besieged by the moorish pirates and Cruzo is captured and made a slave in the North African town of Sally. Okay, and when out fishing, Cruzo and another slave boy named Zuri manage to free themselves from the clutches of their captors and sail away. So they are escaping. Now, a good-natured Portuguese captain helps them out. takes them to brazil and expresses a desire to buy zuri from cruzo but cruzo has some kind of moral dilemma whether or not to sell zuri but finally he agrees to sell him on one condition that the captain will set him free after 10 years now the sojourn in brazil proves to be financially very successful for cruzo as he sets himself as a tobacco plantation owner now motivated by this success and profit that he earns cruzo becomes very restless and he longs to procure black slaves and sails and sails on a slave gathering expedition to west africa so uh, once he gets so much money he wants to buy slaves and for that he sets on an expedition to west africa however things do not go as per plan and he ends up shipwrecked and miserable on the coast of trinidad cruzo soon realizes that he is the sole survivor of the shipwreck and he thinks about his father's and mother, father's warnings and mother's pleas for not to go sailing cruzo slowly but steadily comes to terms with the current situation so he thinks about all these things and try to you know uh, make peace with himself he undergoes an emotional turmoil and after experiencing intense grief and despair he reaches a state of reconciliation and acceptance soon this acceptance turns to gratitude to god for having saved his life and he becomes determined to start his life afresh and he actively seeks food and shelter to survive and sustain himself on the island so this is something we have to learn it is kind of a message that the novel tries to give us which we will discuss uh, in, you know in a more elaborate manner in the analysis part but i just want to mention this because Cruzo underwent a very bad disaster in his life but he is trying to make the best out of it which we have to learn from Cruzo all of us will have many problems in our life but we have to come into terms with that and then live our life peacefully so that message is being told by Cruzo in this particular point Cruzo now exhibits a lot of resourcefulness and makes twelve trips to the wrecks remains to secure guns, food, and other items that can prove useful to him. Scared of savages, Cruzo perseveres to build himself a fortress. Okay, 
Now, on the shore, he discovers goats that could provide him with sustenance. He erects a cross and carves it with the date of his arrival on the island, which is September 1, 1659. And he makes a note every day so that in the absence of anything to record time, he does not get lost in a sea of chronological confusion. So he does so many things in a very systematic manner. He also regularly maintains a journal where he records his daily activities, both his struggles and achievements uh, and, uh, you know, things like candle making, accidental discovery of sprouting grains, his building of a cellar and many such episodes is being are being recorded in his journal. In June 1660, Crusoe gets ill and in a state of hallucination believes that an angel visits him and guards him to repent. Okay. And while drinking tobacco steamed rum, Crusoe has an epiphanic movement, a moment of thought, a moment of realization. And he comes to believe that his soul has been purified and God has delivered him from the former sins. He devotedly starts reading the New Testament that he finds in the wreck and sees his island experience not as a punishment but as a kind of deliverance from his erstwhile life where he has been sinned. Okay, so this is a kind of biblical impact on, uh, you know, uh, Crusoe and that we will discuss further in the analysis part. Now, after convalescing and after his illnesses got cured, he maps the area and does a survey. Much to his joy, he comes upon a cornucopian valley where he builds a shady retreat for himself. Now, he experiences a surge of positivity and optimism at the prospect of being on the island and proclaims himself as its king. So, you can see that he is making the best out of his situation. Even though he is alone at an island, he claims to be the king of the island. He wants to be the sole owner of everything that is there on the particular island. Soon after this, his ink runs out and he is compelled to discontinue the habit of writing in his journal. He trains a pet parrot, adopts a goat as his pet and cultivates his skill in a variety of tasks such as basket weaving, bread making and pottery. Now, after cutting down a gigantic cedar tree, he makes a big canoe from its wood but realizes that it is not viable as he cannot take it to the sea. So, he is trying many things to escape also. He wants to escape from the island as well and he is trying many things to do that as well. So, he builds himself a smaller boat and sails around the islands but narrowly escapes drowning when his boat is tossed by a forceful wave. On reaching his side of the shore, he is comforted by the sound of his pet parrot calling out his name and once again he expresses his gratitude to God for sparing his life. Now he becomes very skilled in animal husbandry and is quite elated with his absolute command over all all the subjects of his little kingdom on the island and excitedly provides the readers with an inventory of his possessions on the island, which includes his two homes, the fortress and the country seat, grape valley, agricultural lands and enclosures for the grazing of the cattle. So, he has established himself a small kingdom of his own in the islands. Now, his slow-paced rhythms of life characterized by occasional eureka moments and hard work continues for several years without any disruption. So, he continues his life like this for several years and this blissful existence is broken one day when what happens? Crusoe is horrified to come upon a man's footprint on the island. So, he finds out that there is a man's footprint on the island. Now, uh, on seeing that, he becomes very vigilant and horrified. First of all, he thinks that to be of uh, that footprint to be of a devil, but then he soon realizes that it must be one of the cannibals who he believes resides closely, close by. Now, this episode sends shivers down his spine and he arms himself and becomes very vigilant. He herds his goats at night in the underground cellar 
and that he has built and also figures out a way to do cooking underground so he doesn't want to come in front of these cannibals he starts entertaining thoughts of ambushing the savages but then another dilemma starts plaguing him so he first thought like you know i will ambush them initially but he uh, you know questions his authority to pass judgment on their practices and then he decides that he will only intervene and attack them if provoked to do so so he takes many steps to avoid being discovered or seen by the cannibals now while reading uh, the bible one day he hears gunshots and the next day he witnessed a ship wrecked on his coast but on investigation he finds that the men on it are either dead or gone now he rummages through the ship and realizes that it is a spanish it is a spanish ship and manages to find some ruined provisions and clothing gold bars etc once again he expresses gratitude to the almighty for sparing his life Crusoe becomes preoccupied with the thoughts of leaving the island and wonders about what might have happened if he had heeded the father's warnings heeded his father's warnings and never left home or uh, have uh, has he had he been satisfied with the profit of the tobacco plantations in brazil so he is you know kind of regretting and thinking uh, you know that if i had been satisfied satisfied with what i have then this condition would not have happened to me uh, this is what cruzo is thinking okay now however uh, uh, he starts feeling guilty again for not having been content with whatever uh, he had and wanting more he soon finds out that the island is scattered with dead human bodies which resemble the aftermath of a cannibal feast his terror knows no bounds and he continues being circumspect soon after he witnesses a group of 30 cannibals heading for the shore with their victims one of the victims who is about to be slaughtered manages to flee and seeks shelter in crusoe's home so uh he, there is this cannibal attack happening and one of the uh, person who is to be the victim of the cannibals flees from there and seeks refuge in crusoe's home crusoe guards him and slays and injures some of the cannibals and eventually defeats most of them now as a gesture of saving him uh and granting him liberation from the captors the victim promises total submission to cruzo and vows to serve him selflessly cruzo gives him the name friday to solemnize the day on which he was rescued since friday exhibits eagerness to please and learn from cruzo he teaches him a few english words and some fundamental christian tenets Friday explains that the cannibals are categorized into distinct groups and that they only consume the flesh of their enemies so they are educating each other okay now he also apprises cruz of the fact that cannibals are responsible for rescuing the men from the shipwreck that cruz encountered earlier and those men the spaniards are residing in close proximity among the natives so uh, there was this ship earlier no so a oru ship inde karyam okke ipo parayunnundu aa ship ഷിപ്രക്കിൽ നിന്ന് മെന്നിനെ റെസ്ക്യൂ ചെയ്യാൻ സഹായിച്ചത് ആരൊക്കെയായിരുന്നു കാനിബൽസ് ആണെന്നാണ് പറയുന്നത് ഓക്കെ കാനിബൽസ് ഓൺലി ഈറ്റ് ദ ഫ്ലഷ് ഓഫ് ദിയർ എനിമീസ് എന്നുള്ളതാണ് ഓക്കെ നോ ഫ്രൈഡേ വൺസ് എക്സ്പ്രസസ് എ വിഷ് ടു റിട്ടേൺ ടു ഹിസ് പീപ്പിൾ ബട്ട് ദ ഐഡിയ ഓഫ് ലൂസിംഗ് ഫ്രൈഡേ ഇസ് നോ ഫൗണ്ട് കമ്പാനിയൻ ഓൺ ദി അതർവൈസ് ഡെസേർട്ടഡ് ഐലൻഡ് മേക്സ് ക്രൂസോ അൺഹാപ്പി now cruzo decides to visit the spaniards and friday also admits that he cannot bear the thought of losing cruzo and decides to build a boat with cruzo to visit the land of the cannibals so now uh, because the spaniards are rescued by the cannibals uh, cruzo thinks uh, of you know meeting them okay visiting them and friday also says that he wants to accompany him Uh, but before they manage to depart they are shocked to discover the arrival of 21 cannibals in cano so before they depart there are many cannibals coming in etrayana 
the cannibals have three victims in their custody and one of them is a uh, is an european okay he is distinguishable by his attire Crusoe and Friday manages to kill most of the cannibals and secure the release of the captives. Friday is euphoric to realize that one of the rescued victims is his father. So, it is his father that they rescued. And the other rescued man is a Spaniard. All of them retire to Crusoe's dwelling for food and shelter. Crusoe makes provisions to welcome them into his community. Later, he sends Friday and his father to survey and explore the island nearby. Their slow-paced existence is once again disrupted when they encounter an approaching English ship. So, now uh, they were slowly, uh, you know, going back to normal uh, when uh, they are encountering an approaching English ship. This terrifies Friday and makes crew so cautious. 11 men from the ship take three prisoners on shore in a boat. Nine of them go on an exploring expedition of the area, while two of them stay back to watch over the prisoners. Okay, now using their wits and muscular strength, Friday and Crusoe manage to subdue these men and secure the release of the prisoners. So only few of the uh, people uh, were guarding the prisoners, rest of them went to explore the island. So these few people were, you know, attacked by Crusoe and Friday and the prisoners were freed. And one of the prisoners is the captain of the ship which had been seized through a mutiny. Eventually, Crusoe and Friday confront the rest of the mutineers. Crusoe agrees to spare their lives on the condition that the ringleader, Will Atkins, pay the price for the mutiny. Okay, so there, there was a mutiny happening and a mutiny lola alne vitta ikalengil abavarade life verde vidana mingila are Will Atkins should pay the price for the mutiny and the baranu. These mutineers then surrender and Crusoe and the rescued captain devise schemes and regain control over the ship. A mutineers in the ship in the control ever ate. Crusoe and the captain pretend that the island is an imperial territory and that the governor has granted their lives so that they may be sent back to England for due processing. So they are trying to, you know, make up a story that this island is an imperial territory and that governor has granted their lives in the Parinonda. Now, retaining five men as hostages, Crusoe orders the other men to seize the ship. The captain expresses gratefulness and gratitude to Crusoe for helping him retrieve his besieged ship and gives him many gifts. He also offers to take him and Friday back to England. So they are finally going to uh, you know, flee from the uh, island. On December 19, 1686, Crusoe embarks on the ship departing for England and some of the mutinous crewmen are abandoned on the island. On arrival in England, Crusoe realizes that in his absence there, his widow friend had has kept his money safe and he has become a very prosperous man. So, there has been a lot of money. Uh, however, he finds out that all his family members have passed away except for his two sisters. He then travels to Lisbon to inquire about his business affairs. The Portuguese captain apprises him of the fact that his plantations in Brazil have been highly profitable. He arranges to sell his Brazilian lands. And uh, suspicious of sea journey, he doesn't want to go for a sea journey. Crusoe endeavors to return to England by land, but is hindered by unfavorable weather and wild animals in northern Spain. On reaching England, he is informed that the sale of the plantations has earned him quite a fortune. Crusoe again starts experiencing the pangs of travel and decides to pacify his desire by returning to Brazil. So, he feels like he wants to travel and he tries to pacify that desire by returning to Brazil. But the prospect of having uh, to convert to Catholicism acts as a deterrent. So, he doesn't want to convert to Catholicism. So, he doesn't want to or he uh, drops the plan of going to Brazil. 
Now, meanwhile, he marries and has three children. However, his wife dies soon after. Now, Crusoe leaves for the East Indies as a trader in 1694. And he also gets a chance to revisit his island and finds out that the island is being administered quite efficiently and has become a flourishing colony now. So, this is the short summary of what is happening in Robinson Crusoe. So, one uh, idea that we have done is that one island, one island, is like a pedum ball. Our samboy kind of carrying all the petty things. We have to do this. We have to do this. How he encounters this difficult situation in his life and how he overcomes the loneliness. Angane all the carrying all the petty things. We have to do this. One novel, like that, study kind of that. Okay. So let us sum up. Uh, we have discussed the summary of the preface as well as a short summary of uh, Robinson Crusoe. Uh, we will be discussing the parts in detail in the upcoming lessons. So that's all for today. So I want all of you guys to read the SLM very carefully and take the help of your value added notes and exampedia. Also, I want all of you to do your objective test as well to assess yourself. So, thank you and I'll meet you again in another video. Till then, happy learning.